I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage in Southern California. What we're going to do today on that charging system is I got out of the shop manual. So I printed out the pages so that we can just, you know, go through the factory step-by-step -step diagnosis thing. And I've had many cars come in that act like a dead bat. Absolutely nothing. Right. You go and, and it, sometimes they'll do a little clunk uh, or a chatter or you get nothing up front and you go to the battery and check and it's got full voltage. It's usually the connection right down below here where the frame, the cable comes over the frame. I don't think we can see it on this car. So let me get my pointer. Try not to short anything out. Can you see way down there? You're gonna have to. Oh yeah, you can see it. That's your remote solenoid. Okay. So this has a solenoid that's. Let's see here. Let's back up. A solenoid is an electrically operated device that uses an electromagnet, so that when you activate it, it makes contact for two really heavy load carrying. It's kind of like a big relay. Now there's one on the frame here. And what that does is it gets the signal from the key, makes sure you're in neutral. It does that automatically uh, so you don't start up and drive. And when you go to crank, it activates. And what it does then is it activates another wire on the starter, which has another solenoid, which is an electromagnetic plunger thing that has two purposes. Not only does it make contact with those big battery cables, so it's kind of, there's a lot of big spark, and a lot of juice, but it drives a little gear into the, the, the flywheel, so it turns the engine. So when you let off the key, that solenoid is spring loaded and it pulls it away from the, the flywheel so that it doesn't keep stay engaged and, and make a horrible noise and burn up your starter. Okay, so, so that connection where the battery cable comes to that solenoid will loosen up a lot on these had many cars coming on a tow truck that they had it towed from a long way and I couldn't get it started. And I go out there and I just reach my hand in there and yank on it a little bit and it starts right up. Okay, so that's that's part of the diagnosis procedure. It's wiggle. That's a big, big thing for electrical diagnosis is wiggle wires. Uh, because not only can you find loose connections where they terminate, in other words, where they plug into something or they're bolted to something, but if inside the wiring, there's a break. If you wiggle it, sometimes you can make it act up or make it reconnect. So that's, that's, that's where we're at here. So what we just did is made sure that that battery cable is good by checking the voltage output at the, at the regulator and at the battery. So we're making sure it gets pretty much all the voltage. You're gonna lose a little bit. The longer you are on a wire, the more you're going to lose. That's why the cable's pretty good size on these things. Uh, that's why big battery cables are so big. It's because not only um, they don't want to lose any voltage, but they have to push a lot of current. Current creates heat. So uh, there's that. So we've determined the charging system works. He doesn't like the way the needle's acting. Let's let's start it up and see what happens here inside the car let me open it up for you steve so we'll watch the ammeter when i start it you see that battery voltage back there is up to 12.75 now so so it's, it's it's coming back up see how it's pushing close to 30 Let's turn the light on. Hopefully it doesn't have panel lights. Light up very well, do they? See, it's wiggling a little bit. And what it's doing is it's trying to modulate the voltage. See how it smooths out after a while? So in my opinion, on this car, his concern with that thing that needle going so far and then bouncing so much, it's because his battery was dead. My gut feeling on this car. I can't find anything wrong with the charging system. 
Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to pull the chart, uh, the, the generator off real quick. I want to show you how I test a generator on the bench. All right. So let's do that. In the meantime, I'm going to put a battery charger on that battery while we're doing that other work. And then we'll see what happens after it's charged up a little more. So I have a commercial grade charger and I will be charging it on medium for a while. Not we're working on that generator. So we will go to medium, put it on hold. Let's get that generator off. I think he's talking about this. Is he nodding his head? This brown round thing with the coil wire around the outside, that is a blower resistor. So that's a resistor for your fan motors for the HVAC. And that's how they control the fan speed is they'll drop the voltage. Okay, good. All right. So what we'll do, the generator's right here. This belt is kind of loose. I said it wasn't too loose, but that's, that's a little looser than I like it. I'll, I guarantee you when he turns the air conditioning on, which is on the same belt, it's gonna go screech. I'm afraid to scratch anything on this guy. As can be seen on this car, this gentleman took the steps to cadmium plate every nut and bolt, screw washer, everything he could on this car as they were originally. That was their type of rust proofing they used back then. Nowadays they'd use zinc. It's less. It's less damaging to the environment than the cadmium. Some places you cannot do cadmium plating. Fortunately, we can still. I have people that can do it. And we'll talk about it later. I, if you want stuff done, I can get it done. It's not cheap. Uh, I pulled out the adjuster nut, so now we can get the belts out of the way. I'm pulling out the front mount nut or bolt. There's that's dropped down. So, so now there are two wires that hook to the back of the dynamo, the generator. One is the field wire, which is the small one. Not exactly. They used a lower output. The manual describes them. I think that's the M47. With the lower output, it's like 25 amps. These are 30 to 35. Um, they, as you can see, this generator has a, a small pulley. And what they did was they um, found that the, the charging voltage was too low at idle situations or in traffic situations. So, and especially at night when your lights are on, your lights go dim, all that kind of stuff. So what they did was they um, changed the pulley size to a smaller one. So they upped the RPMs on the generator itself. And um, 
So this is this is a cloud three. So this is the, basically the latest version of the generator. And then when they went to the shadow, the first cars had the generator, and then they went to an alternator, which is was a much more efficient way to uh, keep system voltage. It is a alternating current AC that's converted to DC. Uh, so it's much, it's just much more efficient. 